My name's Barry Rich. My family run Amber Downs Feedlot on the Northern Downs in Queensland. We uh, run 5,000 head and we're licensed for 10,000. We had the shade um, installed in 2015. It was basically a decision based upon previous um, experience with heat events, mainly to improve the uh, amenity for the cattle, improve the, the comfort um, and reduce the risks associated with heat stress. It's a high density polyethylene. Back in 2015, it cost very close to $50 per SCU to have it installed. Well, at the time, it was a significant investment, but when you break it down to what it's going to cost you over, say, the life of it, 20 years, it's, it's fairly insignificant. Well, the north-south orientation, what it does is, as the sun moves from east to west, it actually moves the shade from one side of the pen completely across to the other side. Uh, the main advantage of that is that the entire pen will actually have time to get sun and to dry out so you don't get, actually get wet spots. In summer the cattle tend to move to the shade and stay in the shade most of the day regardless of whether it's, it's hot or not. But when you do have a heat event yeah, nearly probably 95% of the cattle are in the shade. The only ones that aren't are those that are at the either at the water trough or the feed bunk. Cattle that aren't in the shade, their intakes drop quite significantly during a, a prolonged heat event compared to the cattle that are in the shade. From a risk management point of view, it's taken the level of risk down from, from being critical in a prolonged heat event it's reduced it down to a level that it's unlikely that you're actually going to have losses or major setbacks. If you can install shade, then you will dramatically reduce the direct temperature and also the radiation that is on those cattle and it will significantly improve their level of comfort. And at the end of the day, if we can improve the welfare conditions for the cattle, then it's going to have not only a, a welfare benefit, but also a productivity benefit as well. So in 2010, there was an MLA study conducted by Dr. John Goggin from the University of Queensland. The study was conducted in central Queensland using Angus steers that were um, non-HCP treated, so they were untreated steers, fed for 120 days um, and a short fed export feeding program. Uh, using a, a wheat based diet, so it was a dry rolled wheat based diet um, that the cattle were fed and it was a comparison between animals that were in unshaded pens versus animals that were in shaded pens where the animals had 3.3 square metres per head of shade um, and it was an 80 per cent block out shade cloth shade structure that ran in a, in a north south orientation. So the results from that trial were that the animals in the shaded pen performed considerably better than those in the unshaded pen. So there was an increase in feed intake uh, of around 3% over the, the feeding period, which was equated to about 36 kilos of additional feed intake. Um, there were also increases in weight gain and efficiency of gain. And all of this resulted in increased carcass weights for those cattle from the shaded pens of about 1.9%, um, which was about six kilos of additional carcass weight that was actually obtained from those animals at slaughter. So if we translate those results from, from the earlier trial to current prices, where we've got a feed ration cost of about $450 a tonne, uh, a buy-in price for the steers of about $3.05, and a carcass value of about $6.10 per kilo, then that actually equates to a $20 per head advantage over that summer feeding period on that same 120 day um, feeding program. We, we've taken the figures this time to actually um, include HCP treated cattle. Um, so the benefits are, are sort of, you know, the performance gains are better on those cattle um, because of the treatment. And also that, you know, the, the cost benefit 
it just purely looks at performance so that doesn't take into account um, any losses uh, due to morbidity or mortality through a heat event. If we then extrapolate that out further over the lifespan of a shade structure, if we're looking at a 15 year lifespan, um, then with most of our shade structures we're sort of looking at the moment at current prices somewhere between uh, 60 to to $100 per head um, for insulation costs and, and the, the cost of the shade. If we then extrapolate that out, it works out to over a 15 year life cycle of about one to two cents per head day uh, for the cost of the shade. So yeah, over a longer term, it, it's a, a relatively low cost. There's actually an Australian standard for, for wind loading and encourage people to make sure that their shade structures are, are designed by a qualified engineer. Height of the shade structure is really, really important. Um, we want to make sure that it's at least five metres in height so that it doesn't restrict pen cleaning and any movement underneath the pen. Uh, another factor when um, looking at your shade structure, it's important that we provide sufficient space per animal. Um, so industry generally talks about a minimum of two square metres per head um, of shade uh, in the pen. There's a lot of yards that are moving to, to more than that, so there's a lot that are now being built with three and, and above three metres per head. Yeah, so there's a, a number of resources available. The, the main one online is the MLA uh, Beef Cattle Feedlot Design and Construction Manual, um, but there is a specific chapter there on shade structures. Um, which gives people a lot of advice and, and information um, on how to design chain structures and, and what to look for um, in their decision making. There's a number of commercial uh, suppliers of shade in the industry and really encourage people to, um, to talk to them and, and get a quote for their particular site.